All right, we're gonna take a walk around the house, give you a good view of the entire house, and I'm gonna give you some pointers as we walk around the house. Um, I did get some people asking on my social media already the shakes. I'm gonna just talk about the siding here in Idaho. Um, the siding isn't real wood. The shakes are not real cedar shakes. So people are asking me, you know, what I painted the house with, what I paint the shakes with. So um, the house was painted with a satin paint. It was painted with Glidden um, premium paint. The body was satin. Um, the shakes, they're not real cedar shakes. They're just a composite material made of the same material the siding is. So I painted them flat because I want them to look um, like flat shakes. And um, when it comes to the painting process, I'm just going to talk a little bit about tools and efficiency. Um, and I'll just give you um, a couple examples. Uh, you know, it's best to invest in the proper tools to make painting quicker, more efficient, and more enjoyable. And for instance, hand maskers. You don't want to just have one hand masker, so you've got to keep switching out paper and plastic. That's going to take a whole lot of time doing that. And um, time is going to take away from fun. You could be having at the lake, or time is money as a professional painter. So you should have two hand maskers. Um, I, um, if I'm going to be painting this house, I'm going to be spraying multiple colors in one day. Um, loading and reloading sprayers is going to take a whole lot of time. So using multiple sprayers is um, a good idea, a good tip or trick. If you can't afford multiple, then you're going to have to um, load and reload sprayers. But if you can rent two sprayers, if you're going to be spraying two colors, it's going to save you a whole lot of time. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, tapes and um, papers. I don't in invest in having all kinds of different sizes of tapes and, and papers because it's just going to be a lot more confusing for you searching through your um, vehicle if you're a professional painter or if you're a do-it-yourselfer. You're, you want, you know, um, two inch. The two inches isn't near you. You only got one inch. You're going to be fumbling around for different size tapes. I just use two size tapes. Um, I use um, one inch and inch and a half papers. I use only nine inch paper and that's it. I don't use any other size paper. If I need to fold or cut my paper, I fold or cut it. If I need um, longer paper or wider paper, I just run two rows. So I'm, I'm going to walk you around the gutters themselves. We didn't have to um, prime the gutters. So some people are going to ask, do you have to prime metal gutters? These were previously painted so I didn't have to prime it. Um, the house, the, the siding was in good condition. There was a little, blis little bit of blistering here and there. I did get a lot of people asking me, well, why am I spot priming it? Why don't I just prime the whole house? Well, um, priming the whole entire house is gonna take 10 times more material than it was spot priming and it would have took about three times longer to prime the whole entire house and it didn't need to be primed. So the spot priming was a lot faster and more efficient. You know, why didn't I spray it um, when I was priming it? Um, the back brushing or back rolling um, is um, enhancing adhesion and penetration. So I always like to brush or roll my primer. I had an unusual situation with um, these windows. Um, the, the vinyl on, usually your, your windows are raised higher than the, the vinyl and you, all you got to do is just face the windows. Um, here I had to mask the windows with frog tape and then cut in the little edge and then roll and face the window. And, um, you know, I, because I was working solo, if I was working with a team, I would have masked the windows and then sprayed the body, then rolled the trim, pulled it off, and you would only did masking one time. But working solo, I never leave my masking up. I don't want to leave it up for five days while I'm painting, so I'm just going to pull it off and remask it. But I'll show you, um, you know, something you're, some people might ask um, when I'm talking about facing windows. So, the face of the window is um, painted the trim color. So here in Idaho, it's extremely rare to see this side of the trim painted. And I know it does look amazing if you hand cut in this side, a lot of work. And um, if you're gonna do that, you gotta charge for it. But it's very rare that you do see it. On a house like this, I probably would've charged around $500 to what we call French the windows instead of just facing them. And um, so they're, they're just faced. So if anybody um, has any questions why, um, that's why. Downspouts, we always remove the downspouts so you can paint behind the downspouts. Um, you never wanna leave the downspouts up. So you saw me remove downspouts. Um, this side right here, um, the two sides get really hot, um, really hot, really hard, um, hard, hard weather. 
I sprayed them and they still look really dry, overlapping 50%. So I had to respray them to get them to hold out the sheen properly. Now they have a nice satin sheen to them. The back side of the house, the back side of the house, not nearly as complicated as um, the front side of the house. Uh, just straight shot, straight run. Doors, how to um, pull weather strips out of the doors, mask the doors off, spray the doors. I always spray my doors and never brush and roll the doors because I don't want stippling or brush strokes on the doors. They are smooth doors, so you want them um, to have a smooth look to them and you don't want them to be um, stippled with brush strokes or um, roller marks. So you don't have roping or stippling. Um, got a run of gutters back here. We sprayed the gutters. Um, having cardboard shields, I'm using some tools you're seeing in my video like the cardboard shield holder must have tools if you're going to be doing any type of spraying on um, the cardboards you just stuck them in um, the the gutters so I don't get any overspray on the roof um, really handy little trick um, this this thing right here this is um, here the vent for the fireplace we I typically would not paint one of these things it was already painted um, they do get hot uh, but it's already painted so I went ahead and painted it Back here, um, got a hot tub. Make sure you do not um, stand on the hot tub. Covers, they can break. We worked around the hot tub cover. Wasn't very difficult. You can put like a piece of plywood on there so you can get on it. You can put a ladder on there so you can get on it. Plywood is the best thing, like three quarter inch plywood and then you can stand on the hot tub cover. So we do got another um, high side up here, which shakes, dormers. We use some unusual equipment, pivot, make some tools. The roof is extremely steep and uh, very difficult to get on. I use the pivot roof boot and a um, pivot gutter guard to lean my ladders on the gutters and then get on the roof. Once you get those roof boots installed and installed properly and an extension ladder hooked into one of those roof boots, um, it's very comfortable walking on the roof and not nearly as scary. So. This side over here, a lot of water damage um, to this side, um, sprinklers hitting the side, um, but there was a lot of um, hand brushing peel bond and stuff on here. Tops of windows, you always want to make sure you um, caulk the tops, brush paint on the tops of the windows. Always masking off things like this with paper so we don't get any overspray on um, faucets, stuff like that. Come along here, we got some nice crisp lines you know by masking make sure you get nice clean lines on everything when you're painting everything's all done um trim the the body the body's always sprayed uh so we can get the body sprayed quickly you want to spray large areas so the body's always sprayed trim is typically always hand rolled brushed and rolled and the hand rolling is going to add penetration adhesion it's going to make it last a lot longer and hand rolling is a lot quicker and more efficient than actually spraying the tram. But the body itself, we always spray the gutters because we want them to look like a factory finish, you know, when they're done. These gutters were, uh, they were hand brushed and rolled. There's nothing we can do about those brush strokes that were on them. We got all, all of our lights and everything remounted. I always remove the lights, that way you can paint behind the lights if the lights, um, they wanted to replace them. You definitely want to, especially if it's a color change, you don't want to just mask off the light and um, and now, because if they went to change the lights out a year later, there's going to be a, um, a color difference there. So, um, but we do leave a touch-up kit with the customer, typically a quart of, of the colors, and um, so they can do any touch-ups, you know, necessarily if they've um, dinged or anything, um, mess up the house at all. The house was painted, once again, it was painted with Glidden Premium Paint. Uh, somebody's probably going to ask, I use probably... I think 14 gallons on the body of the house. I, I went through four gallons of trim, and then I went through two gallons of the dark accent color. So the shakes is a dark accent color. That was two gallons. Body, 14 gallons, and then four gallons on the white trim. Um, there was you know, some paint from previous painters on the roof. I use, um, and on the roof, um, the metal work I took and just masked that off, resprayed that flat black so that looks fresh and new again. So it doesn't look like I got that overspray on there. There was some um, white paint um, on some areas on the roof. I just um, took my spray paint and just sprayed those white spots with um, flat black so you can't see those anymore either. So there you have it. Um, the house is all done.
and complete. All right, there you have it. The project is all complete. Stay tuned. I got some really cool drone footage that you're going to get an idea of how big this house was and what it actually took to paint it. So stay tuned for that here in a few seconds. Also, I got a really cool upcoming video series painting a huge commercial building, stucco building, about 15,000 square feet solo. I'm gonna give you some comprehensive tips and tricks, what it took to paint that building. Also, that's coming up here. Stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell that goes along with it. If you don't hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button or somewhere around it, you won't get notified every time I come out with a new video. It's simple, easy to do, and it's always free like all my YouTube videos and all my content across social media. Stay tuned now. Here comes some really cool drone footage your way.